The day starts at midnight. This is the time of night that most good citizens are home in their bed, dreaming of sunlight and the morning to come. I work the night desk of our town's local newspaper, the Daily Iraqi. While the city sleeps uneasily, I must remain awake and vigilant to any murmur of crime or evil doing. For, for any on any given night, some male factor might commit a misdeed so foul that I might just get the great bad story I need to rock me off this desk to the top of the fold. My job is to listen to police scanners and hope for occasional juice tidbit called into our tip line by some would-be squealer. Just like that. Will this be the ticket to that supreme scoop? Or will I once again be forced to listen to a tale of some two-bit hoodlum pilfering pastries in the grandma's cookie jar? Literally, last week there was this kid who... Night desk, Sterling Rockford speaking. Is this the Daily Oracular? Yeah, lady. What's on your mind? Are you Rocky Rockford, ace reporter? That's my moniker. Well... Come on, lady. Cough it up. You got a tip for us or what? The sumptuous sapphire. The star Sagway has been stolen. Old news. The gem was stolen this afternoon. Broad daylight. Guards all around. Crime of the century. A sapphire worth its weight in emeralds. On loan from famed billionaire social life, Lane Woods. <laughs> I was at home, asleep, missed the whole megla, because I worked the night desk. Sorry, lady. Wait! I might know who done it. You do? Now that's a story. Spill it! There's the sky, see? I saw this low-life drifter there at the scene. You got a name? I ain't giving you my name! Not yours! The drifters. Oh! I only know him as... Shifty. Shifty Weaselman. Weaselman, huh? You got an address? I do, but Shifty don't. He's a drifter, like I said. Never stays anywhere more than three minutes. Scared for a skin, I guess. Hmm. What does the guy... That's all you get from me, Newshound! Rocky's a straight-up guy, but I couldn't give him my name. I had too many runs in with the law in this town. My name's Velma. Velma Tinger. They mostly call me the songbird. On account of when I get some choice info, I gotta sing. I can't help myself. And I just know Shifty's got the lowdown on that gemstone. I saw him. I saw him sulking around near the Museum of Precious Baubles on 14th Street, right around the time of the heist. If he didn't do it, I bet he knows who did. The dame's tip was sketchy, but far too important to my career not to do a follow-up. I'm stuck writing this desk till 8 a.m. But I know just a gumshoe who could track down this weaselman and put the squeeze on him. Time to call in Sam Spade. This is when I come into the story. My name's Samantha Spade. Sam for short. I'm a private investigator, according to my business cards. Not at all unusual for me to get a, a phone call in these small hours. Probably someone trying to hire me for some discreet legwork. Could be just some distressed housewife looking for a misplaced husband. Or a cat. Doesn't matter. I, I get the same pay for every job. $20 a day. Two bits a mile. But this call, it seemed different. Like the very ring I was saying, this call is important. This call is important. (laughs) 
It's a nickel. Hey, Sam, it's Rocky. My heart, it skipped a beat, you see? Me and Rocky Rockford go way back. We used to see each other all the time until he got that job on the night desk. Then it was all about the news and they just stopped calling. Big Lennox. Yeah, what do you want? Hey, Sam, how's tricks? Doing okay, I guess. But you didn't call just to shoot the breeze. What's up? I got a bit of info tonight from the tip line. I thought you might have wanted to run with it. A job? Well, it'd be off the books. But look, if it pays off, there's a big reward in it. We could split the loot, and frankly, a big scoop would be good for my career. Again with his career. Well, let's have it. You heard about the sapphire, the star of Skagway? Stolen from the museum, it was all in the late papers. Even yours. Well, this girly calls from our tip line tonight, and she says she knows the guy who saw it all go down. Gave a name. I thought you maybe you'd know him. What's the name? Are you in? Let's just say you have my undivided attention. Okay. She got up the, the name of some shady character called Shifty Weaselman. I know Shifty. He's a professional drifter. Never stays anywhere twice. He's known for keeping his papers open and his traps. Shut. What'd you say about him, this tipster? Well, she said he was there. Saw the whole thing. He's either involved or knows who did the heist. Did he get in touch with them? Yeah, I got his number. He's one of the few lines with unlimited data at a reasonable price. Grand followed him. I'll give him a call, see what he knows. And you'll call me back when you learn something. Yeah, I'll keep you in the loop. It's nice hearing your voice, Sam. Yeah, sure. I had to hang up on the big lug before things got sentimental. It's got to be strictly business. So, I dialed Shifty. Yeah? Your name is Fox, isn't it? Fox Weaselman? They call me Shifty, dollface. Oh, oh, I didn't think you'd like that name. Suits me fine. And I recognize you, Samantha Spade. You can see me. <laughs> I see everything. Ain't technology grand. So what do I owe your phone call? Well, we got this tip from a lady who said you might have seen something at the Museum of Precious Bobbles this afternoon. So Little Miss Songbird sang, did she? I knew she would. The name of your canary is Velma Tanager. I spotted her in the crowd. Yeah, I was there. I saw the whole caper. I know it went down. And I suppose you want me to squawk, too. There might be some reward box in it for you. Change that might to a will. There will be some reward box in it for me. Fine. There will be a reward. If the gem is recovered. Well, it's up to the cops and judges, ain't it? Still, you got the rep for being a good egg, so I'll help you. But not here, not now. The walls have ears, as you might say, but I'll give you three clues to start you off. Firstly, your songbird ain't telling all she knows. She was there too, so she saw a lot more than she thinks she saw, I'll bet. 
I'd question Songbird again if I were you. Remember, she may be reticent, but she'll sing if the melody's right. She can't help herself. It's in her nature. Will do. Do you know her? The number's 555 five, five, Warbler. Look, I gotta get going, kiddo. I never stay in the same locale for more than three minutes. It's my own little insurance policy. But Cops <laughs> will never catch shifty weaselmen. Also, I'll give you another hint in the form of a question. Why didn't the guards ring the alarm? Gotta go. As you know, I'm a drifter. What? Wait! You, you only gave me two clues! Be as clever as your reputation. I gave you three. How should I contact you again? Uh-uh, uh-uh. I'll contact you. When I'm in a, in a more, uh, secure location and can't be overheard. And I'd better be in it for a taste of that reward money, Dollface. This seemed like a hot lead, so I called up Velma right away. Hello? Velma Tanager. Who wants to know? This is Sam Spade. The private detective? I knew I shouldn't have called the newspaper. Well, you did, and I'm following up on it. I don't know nothing. Aha, double negative. So you do know something. Maybe, but I ain't saying gumshoe. Alyssa Birdie told me you'd sing the right tune. I told Rocky all I know. Really? Let's see. <clears throat> me, me. Alouette, gentil, alouette. No, no. Alouette, gentil, plumeré. No, please. Jesse plumeré, la tête. Jesse plumeré, la tête. Alouette, gentil, plumeré. All right, all right. I'll sing. I'll sing. I'll tell you what I saw. There was a crowd gathering around the Museum of Precious Baubles. All there to see was this valuable blue gem being delivered. That's when I saw Shifty, and he must have seen me. Very little escapes his watchful eyes, you know? Okay, go on. Well, there were these four guards, kind of struggling to carry that the small box. The box was small, because the gemstone's small. I mean, the gem is big by sapphire standards, but that's still pretty small. So here's these four burly guys trying to carry this tiny box between them up to the staircase and into the museum. Naturally, one of them tripped and the box fell to the ground. This men, do you know which one tripped? It was the one with the red hair. I remember this clearly. Two guys were bald, and one had nice brown hair, and the last one was a redhead. He was the one who tripped. So then this dark cloaked figure came from out of the crowd, picks up the box, and hands it to the redhead. And then he melts back into the crowd without as much as a thank you. Quicker than lightning, the guards examined the box and seemed satisfied. So they just went on their way into the museum. They get inside, they open the box, no gem! I figured it was the old switcheroo. This shady figure, did you see his face? No, he just had a cloak. And I say he, but it might have been a lady. I just don't have very good van I just didn't have a very good vantage point. Shifty might know better. The crowd disappeared as soon as the guards got inside. Whoever it was, they're long gone. Do you think Shifty had a better view? Pretty sure. Look, Sam, I told you all I know, honest. All right, nighty night songbird, nice singing with you. I'll let you go. Now, I just have to get back in touch with Shifty. Hmm. Oh, perhaps that's him. Shifty. Shifty. Shifty! Oh, uh, if you're talking, I can't hear you. Um, where are you at the polling lanes? Shifty! 
Shifty! Shifty, oh, this... God, this is ridiculous! Uh, where are you? Uh, I don't know what you're saying! No, oh, this is ridiculous! I'm gonna try Rocky. See if he's learned anything. Night desk, Sterling Rockford speaking. Oh, Sterling Rockford, is it? Not Rocky? Hey, Sam, what's up? Well, I got a little info to that song, Tris of yours. Oh, yeah? I had to get tough, but I got her to sing. And? She said she saw a guy do a switch through the box the gem was in. There was an altercation mentioned in the story. Something about a guy with a cape. She said it was a cloak. Cloak, cape, what's the difference? What does the blurb say? Might be important. Or it might be nothing. All right. Central City, flash. 4.32 p.m., the fabulous star of Skegway Sapphire appears to have been stolen in broad daylight on the steep steps of Museum of Precious Bebbles on 14th Street. The gem was on loan from the world-famous collection of billionaire social light lane ones. Yada, yada, yada. Insured for... No wonder they're offering a big reward for its recovery. No mention of cape, cloak, or mysterious man. Mm. What's the rest of the place, though? Maybe there's a follow-up? Okay, okay, okay. Wait, here. Statement from Red Skaden, guard for Frick's Armored Trunk Company. Skating claims he was tripped accidentally by another guard as they ascend the stairs. A guy in a cloak helped him retrieve the box they were carrying. Well, it's a cloak if it makes a difference. Lends credence to the song, but story. Oh! Here's something. It was Skaden's first day on the job. Wait a minute. It was the first day for all the guards. That's unusual. Well... I gotta go do some digging on this animal. Call you back. Anytime, Rocky. The plot thickens. I wonder what Shifty was trying to tell me before. Phone lead called again. Hello? The office. Shifty, I'm so glad you called. It turns out Velma did know something. She tell you about the guards? What about them? They're bogus. They're a gang led by this guy named Red Skadden. They call themselves a the red hair ring on account of his flaming red locks. But they didn't steal the jewel. Hmm. It must have been the guy in the cloak. Smart gal. Yeah, it was him. He swapped the real box for a duplicate when he picked it up off the ground. And you saw his face. Yeah, yeah, I did. I recognized him. Well, who was it? I clued you in the last time I called. I couldn't hear you. If your ears were open, you heard plenty. Plus, <laughs> listen now. You can't miss this last clue. Fox, you know who stole the sapphire. You're alone now. Why don't you just come out and tell me who stole the gem? Dollface, I've already told you the guy's name and their motive. You just have to put it together. They tell me you're one smart cookie. You'll get it. And when you do catch the perp, I'll be expecting a good chunk of that reward, though. And then it hit me. 
It was all right there, just like he said. So I called Rocky one last time. Night desk, still in Rockford speaking. Rocky, I got it. I know who done it. So, do tell. Come on, let's hear it. You better be the one to call the police on this. Lane Woods is still a big name in this town. Lane Woods, the billionaire socialite. He was behind this? Stole his own gem, full of insurance money. Now that's the story. Shifty Weasman actually laid it all out for me like breadcrumbs. Why didn't the gods bring them along? Because it was an inside job. They may have been planning to steal it, but they never got the chance. Lane Woods was too quick. Shifty talked about insurance in our first conversation. That was his third clue to me. Of course. Shifty actually clued me in on the name as well. The second time I heard from him, he was in a bowling alley. Couldn't hear him because of all the bowling lanes. He was bouncing around and making noise. But that was a clue. Get it? Lane. The third time we talked, he was, there was an owl. So he was in the woods. Phew. But uh, do you think he'll come down to the police station and make a statement? He is the eyewitness. I'm pretty sure he will for a share of that reward money. Besides, I'm sure that's the one place he's never been. Not even for three minutes. <laughs>